React Native is changing fast, and right now, I've never been more bullish about its future. Today, I'll share exactly what's happening, what's improving, and why now might be the best time to bet on React Native. Hey, if you're new here, I'm Beto, founder of Code with Beto and developer success engineer at Expo, and I've been building in React Native for years. If you're a mobile dev or curious about the future of the framework, hit subscribe and let's dive in. A few months ago, Apple rolled out the new liquid glass design. It's not just a tweak, it's a complete refresh across all Apple platforms. And here's the kicker, they change it at the operating system level, updating the underlying APIs developers use. That means native apps, whether you wrote them in SwiftUI or React Native, get the update instantly just by recompiling the application with Xcode 26. The last time Apple did something this big was on iOS 7 in 2013, more than 10 years ago, which radically shifted Apple's mobile UI away from skeuomorphic textures towards a flat, minimalistic aesthetic. Apple explicitly compares the scale of the new liquid glass redesign to that of the iOS 7, underscoring its significance as the broadest operating system level design update in a decade. So yeah, this new design isn't going anywhere. React Native benefits here because it uses native primitives, things like UI button under the hood. So when Apple changes how these primitives look, your app automatically updates. If we compare this to Flutter, for example, which is another uh, cross-platform framework, Flutter draws everything manually for cross-platform consistency, which means they have to re-implement Liquid Glass themselves. And in this case, they've actually said that they are not going to. And I completely understand. Imagine having to implement whatever Apple does every time that Apple changes something. It's just not scalable. That's a huge difference in philosophy. And it's exactly why staying close to native APIs matter. By the way, this is the kind of stuff I cover in my in-depth courses at Code with Beto. Not just the how of React Native, but also the why behind the decisions. So you can make better technical calls for your application. So if you want to level up your skills, the link is going to be in the description. Pro members get access to all my template, resources, and private GitHub repos. Now, I'm not saying that React Native is doing everything right. We still have work to do and some details to refine, but the React Native community is moving fast and it's just exciting to watch. Take navigation, for example. React Navigation is the standard for most applications, but until now, it relied heavily on JavaScript, even when using native primitives under the hood. But that's changing. Just a few days ago, the maintainers of React Native screens mentioned the release of an alpha version of native tabs, which by the time that you are watching this video might already be available in production. This is a big deal. It means tabs rendered using actual system components, bringing React Native closer to a true native user experience. Even better, Expo Router will support native tabs in its next release, which might be out as well by the time that you are watching this video. With native stacks, native tabs, context menus, and smoother transitions, we are finally catching up to the platform expectations. On top of that, APIs like Expo Modules API make creating your own native module easier than ever. In case you need something specific for your application, you can use Expo Modules API to bring any native dependency whenever you need. I even built one for Apple's new on-device LLMs in iOS 26. I'll leave the link in the description in case you're curious. I just want to highlight that it's very approachable. I had a great time building the module and with AI as my copilot, it's not as scary as it used to be. And I'm telling you guys, I'm not the only one bullish on React Native. Companies like Expo are investing heavily in native implementation. Take Expo UI, for example, which uses the entire native framework utilizing Swift UI and Jetpack Compose to render native components for each specific platform. Also take Callstack, for example. They've been doing a lot of great work with native implementation and bringing the newest and latest LLMs, local on device, capabilities to your phone. They created the package React Native AI, which leverages on-device LLMs, even the new ones introduced in iOS 26. And in other news, we have Software Mention, which is also investing heavily in bringing native tabs to React Native screens. 
This is a huge deal because all the navigation packages rely on React Native screens like React Navigation and Expo Router. We also have Shopify, which recently announced a new version of Flashlist, a high performance list component that you can use in your application. This gives me confidence big companies are investing heavily in React Native because they've seen the results of the multi-platform framework, the speed it offers developers, faster iterations, and the unique architecture that takes advantage of native primitives while also leveraging the JavaScript bundle in your application. And this comes with many benefits like over the air update support, the ability to skip apps or review and go straight to your users and the possibility to roll back as well instantly with tools like EAS update from Expo. Many companies are investing in and choosing to use React Native right now. And that's exciting to me. Not only that, but even funds are deciding to invest heavily in React Native. Goldstack, for example, recently announced that they raised private equity investment from a major US private equity firm. So the big players in California, Silicon Valley, know the value of investing in companies that are working in React Native. They see the future and they might even see things that we don't recognize yet. But if you pay attention, everything is pointing to a bright future for React Native. And of course, I must mention Meta. They are the creators of React Native and they're maintaining it. They provide the basic primitives, but also the companies that are building on top of it. It's just really exciting to watch. Another thing that really excites me is the React Native community. Just go to X and you'll find a bunch of posts from great developers building awesome React Native applications, doing really cool stuff like creating custom native modules and sharing them with the community as a library. The community is great, supportive, and even if you create your own library and publish it as open source, I'm pretty sure that you will get the support of the entire community. It's just amazing to watch. Okay, so, so far, We've been talking about the community, which you could argue that already has experience with React Native, but the new AI companies that are creating tools for new builders of applications, also known as Vive coders, are using Expo and React Native to power their AI tools that let you create apps with just one prompt. For example, there's Bolt.new and other AI tools like it. I actually created a video a while ago uh, testing some of the AI tools, and I'm going to leave the link in the description in case you're curious as well. This increases the chances of more developers coming into the React Native ecosystem. Now, the versatility of React Native to also run in the browser makes these experiences even better and approachable. This is a huge positive signal as well. It means that most applications, including the next big ones, are likely to be built with React Native and Expo. You can already see it. Right now, many top applications in the App Store and Play Store are built with React Native. So in conclusion, when the platform changes like Apple just did, React Native apps evolve right along with it. Combine that with the great developer experience, the ease of translating your React web skills into native development, the help of AI, and the advantage that AI models know how to write good React, good JavaScript, good TypeScript really empowers React Native. The fast iterations, the automations, the ability to ship updates while skipping the apps to review, that's just a no brainer for big companies. You can also automate everything from pushing to main all the way to publishing an update for your users using tools like Expo application services and all of that while taking advantage of native primitives keeping the look and feel of a native application. This is why big companies and major players are paying attention and investing heavily in React Native. It's very difficult to justify not using React Native nowadays. But anyway, that's it for this video, guys. Let me know in the comments what you think about the Liquid Class design. Do you love it? Do you hate it? And if you find this video helpful or think I missed something, drop it in the comments. And thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.